Hello, my beautiful friends. Today, I am with my friend Stephen. He is the owner of this massive library that I am digesting 10 books at a time. Stephen is a witch. He was self-initiated at 15 and formally initiated at 36. Hi, Stephen. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to dive right in. We've got 10 books. They're super awesome. The first one is The Book of Ceremonial Magic, including the rites and mysteries of goetic thergy, sorcery, and infernal necromancy. <laughs> That's a lot. By author Edward Waite. And it has illustrations. And this was put out by Lands End Press. I am not sure of the year, but Stephen, take it away. Tell me about this book. Have you read it? Yeah, this is probably a um, late 70s edition of author Edward Waite's classic book of black magic and of packs. I've changed the uh, title slightly. This is actually a uh, collection of, uh, I, I like to call it the, the grimoire, medieval grimoire's greatest hits. Ooh. We've got all kinds of stuff in here from uh, the, everything from the Key of Solomon to uh, Boetia, Ceremonial Magic. All of it. No witch or warlock in the 70s was without this book. It's a fantastic collection of various parts of medieval magic. Medieval magic. That's medieval cool. magic indeed. We uh, have everything from transcendental magic to um, the art of Goetia, which many of you understand has to do with the uh, evocation of the 72 lords of the Jinn. It's heavily illustrated, and it's just fantastic. It's got all kinds of great, great uh, woodcuts in it. Oh, I love woodcuts. Oh, yeah, they're really great. It's the kind of thing that really got me hung up on uh, magic when I started in the 1970s, much to my parents' great dismay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's got talismans in it. You really have to use a kind of free hand in working your way through these things. Take, take the bits and parts that you find usable and use it in what way you want. The old hoodoo practitioners would simply cut the um, cut or copy um, the sigils or talismans out of the book and uh, use it however they will. They usually put it in a... Um, what well, I like to call a mojo bag. It's got talismans for love, talismans for um, seeking uh, wisdom. It's got talismans to dispel evil, that sort of thing. It's got uh, lots and lots of uh, stuff. The rituals of black magic. Yes, That's interesting. the rituals of black <laughs> magic. The, the infamous Grimorium Verum. Like I said, this book is a kind of hodgepodge of medieval magic. But uh, it's very, very useful if you want to uh, get a an idea of uh, what our medieval magicians friends back in the day were up to. Uh, Arthur Edward Wade is not a very good um, commenter. He tends to think uh, all of this is a lot of bunk and he says so throughout the book, oh. which is unfortunate. You had to ignore a lot of what Arthur Edward Wade said about magic because he was not, although he belonged to the Golden Dawn, the uh, magical lodge from the late 1800s, the English lodge, although he belonged to that lodge, he did not care for uh, magic medieval magic. Hmm. Now, admittedly, a lot of this is, is hard to encompass. It's a lot of um, going about making, it's not a simple path of magic. You gotta make all kinds of stuff and everything. And it, yeah, it, to, it looks uh, very involved. All it's the diagrams. very involved. Very involved indeed. Yeah, and so much work Ed, for Edward Allen Wade, but uh, good book. I think I own about three or four copies. And you might wonder, well, why are you on three or four copies? Because I'm a collector. And that's how <laughs> I got this massive... So I'm sure we'll see this book again then. You will see this book again. Okay. This is uh, the... Co no, this is the Bell edition. Uh... Yeah, probably late 70s, I'm saying. But uh, i got about four or five copies oh, okay. around here some place. All right, let's All go. Right. <clears throat> Book number two. Ooh, the History of the Devil and the Idea of Evil by Paul Karras. Correct. Yes, this is Bell Publications. Let's see. It's got a lot of cool pictures of the devil. And all it's this very is... photographic, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, also put out by Lands in Press. And this is a pretty thick book. Hardcover. I, yeah, the last book, Book of Ceremonial Magic, was hardcover. And the history of the devil here is hardcover. Yeah. This is a philosophical <laughs> discussion of uh, evil, essentially. It's, uh, again, heavily illustrated. I love those old, um, what do you say they were? 
Woodcuts. Woodcuts. Yeah. Yes, woodcuts. Sorry. Yeah, a lot of uh, stuff about the um, war in heaven and that sort of thing. It's a uh, review of early Christianity. How it is that uh, it really is the history of the devil as we, uh, over the centuries, the evolution of the devil over the centuries and the idea of evil. And good book. I enjoyed it. It was uh, reasonably enlightening. But uh, you have to have a kind of macabre sensibilities for this kind of thing. And I do that, and I do have an <laughs> odd imaginative flair, and it shows in my book collection. So Definitely. Some people who have visited and seen my book collection run screaming out the door <laughs> right. halfway to Arkansas. Yeah, well, you collect books about the devil that tends I to know, affect people. I know, but why should that reflect <laughs> on me? Just because I own something doesn't mean that uh, I approve of it. I own lots of things I disapprove of. <laughs> okay. Book number, where are we on? Book number three, Witches, in Fact and Fantasy by Lorraine Payne. I think that's Lauren Lorraine? Payne. Yeah, Lauren? That yeah, doesn't Lauren. look like Lauren. Yeah, I think that's I a gentleman. Know. It's not Lorraine. Okay, that's why it's spelled weird if it's a boy. Taplinger Press. Taplinger. Taplinger. I'm so glad you're here to help me. Taplinger. Let's see. Yeah, Taplinger Publishing Company from New York. Copyright 1971. Another hardcover from the 70s, so you can imagine. Yep. And here we go. This is a cultural history of witchcraft, witches, and witchcraft, and uh, how we came about getting such a bad, bad reputation. <laughs> we <laughs> did. So, the witch in the uh, village cow was probably not a good idea, <laughs> but that's what we do. Yeah. Somebody's cow gets bewitched, and they come, uh, they come I'm looking for somebody but uh, I remember this to be a I read it a long time ago I remember it to be a very uh, very good book it covers uh, even has a section on charms good and bad Lauren Payne also wrote a book called uh, the hierarchy of hell which really looks good on a bookshelf I don't care who you are <laughs> a collector's edition right all right where are we at one, two, three, four. Book number four, La Basse Down There, A Study in Satanism. Now, what's his name? Joris Carl? I'm murdering this name. Yeah, Oris Carl Huseman's. Huseman's, okay. Yeah. Oris Carl Huseman's, translated by Keen Wallace with an introduction by Robert Baldick. And this book, University Books, was put out by University Books. I'm not sure what year. Interesting. I'm pretty, yeah, looks like a 70s book. Yeah, it's a 70s book. This is one of the great university books. Um, it's basically a book about French decadence, decadent French literature. It examines the role of witchcraft in uh, France, probably in the uh, 17th century, 1600s like that. But it's a story about a uh, debauched Roman Catholic priest who led many, many people aside. And uh, it really is a great contribution to uh, French decadent literature. I'll be quite honest with you. I know the description of the book, but I don't think I got too far into this one. I don't, sorry to say. I can't imagine you've read every single one of these books back to back. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Some of them were uh, collected like this one, simply because it has some something remote to do with uh, occultism in general. Huh. But there was a uh, great French scandal. I think it was in the uh, 17th century. I'm hmm. not quite sure. But uh, some people got poisoned. And some poisoned. people, well, yes, and some, many people went to the guillotine. It was a uh, court scandal wow yeah, yeah so definitely um something interesting to have on your bookshelf for sure it looks cool it's cool it really is um i'm just going to read from the uh, inner flap for a minute in a fascinating new introduction robert baldrick huseman's authoritative biographer gives us the historical background and who's on the lure details of la basse is based the fantastic career of ex abbey boulan gave huseman his hero this monster first exploit was to found, with his nun mistress, a society for the reparation of souls, whose chief activity was the obscene and profane medication of ailing nuns. The sacrifice of an illegitimate infant on the altar, however, was a shade too daring. The lamb was obliged to disband the society. After a long prison term, he set up as an exorcist. Again, his patients were distressed nuns, and again, his patients were treated as supernatural sexual intercourse with Christ and others. Gets a bit much, doesn't it? I mean, right off the bat. Wow. Yeah, I also see nun exploitation movies. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's hardcore. All right. It is indeed. Let's see. 
Uh, we have a trade paper back here, Magic Without Peers. This is by Herodine Rainbird and David Rankin. And this is put out by, let's see, Kapal Band Publishing? Mm, right. Kapal Band Publishing. Okay, I don't know. One of these years. I don't see it. <laughs> so, Magic Without Peers. All right. This is from some English friends of ours. It's uh, Aridne Rainbird and David Rankin. Uh, David Rankin has a long uh, history of writing excellent uh, stuff about magic with um, another author of some note. This is a uh, new uh, look at uh, magic. It's got the usual things in it about um, inner guide work, uh, introduces you to a series of gods you can work with, has a uh, usual rundown of um, animals, color crystals, Festivals, animals, uh, forest goddesses. So it would be uh, low magic. Yeah, it's definitely low magic. It's still decidedly different than what we've discussed uh, before. Mm -hmm. I do have an issue with this book. What? It has a lot of cultural appropriation that I'm uh, not comfortable with. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I respect David Rankin's work. He uh, is very, very good. This was previous stuff. But uh, generally, it's not bad. It's uh, it's good. I just uh, do not like uh, mixing traditions like Hinduism with witchcraft. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense Right, to me. no, not at all. I don't care for that. It's a book that I bought, having purchased a, a few other Copal Bond books, and I enjoyed those, but this one went, uh, this one I uh, read over, and uh, went promptly on the bookshelf, and I haven't seen this thing in <laughs> years. But it's uh, not, that's not bad if you can put aside the cultural appropriation. I never could, <laughs> so I never really used this book, and a lot of the things, this is, right, my uh, friend Tanya points out that uh, this is a course in progressive witchcraft for the solitary practitioner. That's very good. On the back of the book, it says, this is a book about progressive witchcraft, which the authors see as being more eclectic and universal in Alexandrian and Gardnerian Wicca. Oh, we, I so wish that uh, people would stop attacking the Alexandrians and Gardnerians. <laughs> After all, they, they were the people that uh, set this stuff in motion and kept it going. Mm -hmm. Without their contribution, there would probably be no David Rankin or, for that matter, Erdne right. Rainbird. Definitely. All right. Our next book, The Black Art by Rolo Ahmed, Gerald Publications, Gerald's Publishers, London. And the year first published by John Long in 1936. Then there was an Arrow edition in 1966. This edition is 1968 and it has a new introduction by Dennis Wheatley in 1966. That's bad news right off the bat. Uh-oh. <laughs> Another hardcover. Yeah, Dennis Wheatley was a uh, pulp science fiction writer. He wrote a bunch of uh, books on uh, witchcraft back in the 50s and 60s. He uh, had little or no idea what he was talking about. Uh, but, uh, but he uh, made a good living at it, so he was a hack writer. <laughs> so uh, having uh, Mr. Dennis Wheatley preface your book strongly suggests book. <laughs> that uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, you know what? This is uh, actually Marlar. It's from Marlar Publishing Company. That's a um, that's a uh, corporation I did a lot of business in when I was a teenager. They are in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They had a publishing part, and they had a uh, occult uh, dry goods situation so i got a lot of my um a good start on my books from marlar publishing and um every once in a while a package would arrive and i'd, it, I'd be in i was in high school at the time and be full of all kinds of wonderful things i had ordered that i couldn't ever get in pensacola but at any rate uh roland alma too was a hack writer he was uh this is uh stuff reprinted from other more uh, notable authors with some of his interpretation there's a notable incident uh he uh, wound up being challenged by the british press on some of this stuff wow. I, d I don't think that rollo was a particularly experienced magician by any stretch of the imagination he violated one of the uh, core tenets of magic which is to remain silent yes and mr uh, rollo ahmed's case that would have been a good idea because on halloween night something like gosh no sometime in the mid 60s he invited to press to one of his magical operations and it failed spectacularly. Oh my gosh. Nothing happened whatsoever. The gods turned their back on Mr. Uh, Ahmed, <laughs> which is too bad. So, so much for Rolo. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Remember uh, to remain silent. And you could do well in magic. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> All right, now we're on to book number six, The Complete Book of Spells, Curses, and Magical Recipes. And this, oh, it's so cool. Leonard R.N. Ashley, published by Barricade Books 
Incorporated in 1997. So first page of the book here, it's, it's got a picture of the magician card from the yeah, tarot. Yeah, that's the uh, A.E. Wait. Uh, that's from mm -hmm. A.E. Waits Tarot, which of course we know is the standard reference for uh, tarots. And I have a huge collection of tarot cards, I really do. And I find my default version is certainly uh, A.E. Wait. Yeah, it's the... It actually managed to do some really good stuff, but it's so, it was so um, stuck up about it. He's one, of these, he's, he's one of these guys that we refer to as an armchair magician. He wrote a lot about it, but he never really practiced it. But uh, yeah, this is a complete book of spells, curses, and magical recipes. And I like this book a lot. Why? Because it's got balls. It really does. Who publishes a book, a magical book, Spells, Curses, and Magical Recipes? Now, what date did we see this came out? Let's see. 1997. Yeah. 1997. This is, folks, this is not your grandma's Wicca. <laughs> It's not big on crystals. It's not there's You'll find no references to sage sticks or anything like that. What you will find is an amazing anthology of magic taken from historical sources. This is traditional stuff, or what I like to call traditional magic. It's uh, not New Agey. I can't stand New Agey magic. I really don't. I really don't care for that. But it's got all kinds of good stuff in here um, for a good ma marriage. It's got a lot of historical stuff. Some some of it uh, you'll you'll find it's uh, very very common. But it's a really nice thick trade paperback book, and it has uh, all kinds of sections on different facets. Of magic makes a few references to uh, modern works. Let's see. Let's have a look at the uh, table of contents. Oh yeah, here we go. Curses and ill intent. Oh, that's that's all. We'll get the fluffy bunnies all fluffy up. Huh? <laughs> Yep, yep. I don't want that. What a way to start it Yeah, because they're, they're, they're like, for a long time, they were the gatekeepers of uh, magic and witchcraft. Because they're trying to sell this stuff to, uh, apparently, middle-aged white women, suburban housewives or something. Yeah, they, they didn't really, <laughs> really didn't want all that about rituals and ceremonies and curses and ill intent. But uh, that failed. It's hard to convince anybody looking through this book that witchcraft is all, all white magic and uh, harmlessness and all that. Yeah, this is a heavy book. Um, if you are a uh, person who was uh, easily triggered by real magic, you should avoid this book. But it has some very, very, very practical stuff in here. A lot of practical, uh, a lot of practical information on uh, on magic. Oh, here's something helpful to avoid being hexed. Yeah, you'll definitely want to need that if you're traveling this uh, traveling these circles. You'll definitely want that uh, bit of relief. Always good to have some psychic defense magic in your back pocket. These African American recipes are highly regarded in the South. That's a lot of stuff I grew up with. I grew I, for a long time. I thought hoodoo was witchcraft, but the more I learned about it, I realized that uh, it's a Southern thing. It's a Southern thing, yeah. Blue Blues, the crossroads, all of it. All right, here we go. Eight, possession and exorcism. Tragat K. Ostrich. Yeah, no, I don't even want to try that one. Causeway books. What? Yeah, I'm not even going to try that. The name? name? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pro, Progo K. Estrich. Okay, this is originally titled, this is the Causeway edition, this was originally titled, titled Obsession, Possession, and Exorcism both by Spirits, Primitive and Modern. This is actually the book that is the basis for the movie, The Exorcist. Ooh. This is how uh, Freakin, the uh, writer, used for his reference for, uh, yeah, William, William Peter Blake, right here, it's, in his novel, The Exorcist, author William Peter Blatty cites this book as a definitive study of possession and makes clear his great debt to this book. Since Estrich's definitive study, he writes, first published in 1921, very little has been added to the body of knowledge of possession, the advances of psychiatry notwithstanding. Later on in the novel, it is after rereading Estrich's exhaustive study that Father Karras, the Jesuit psychiatrist, concludes, and most significantly present in Regan, that was a little girl possessed in The Exorcist, were the basic symptoms of the hardcore of cases which Estrick had characterized as genuine possession. The striking changes in the voice and the features, plus the manifestation of a new personality. Yep, yeah, good book. It's Again, a beautiful book. Yeah. I have, uh, I have a couple of copies of this. I have this one. This is um, yes, Causeway Books, New York. They're a subsidiary of University Books. University Books was a publisher that republished all the great books of magic, spiritual spiritualism, uh, hauntings, all of it. If uh, if you're a witch with uh, who grew up in the 70s, 1970s, you're, you're of course very familiar with, with university books. They're uh, very collectible, I'll say that. 
And I've got, again, I've got uh, probably a couple of editions of this. Okay, originally titled Possession, Demonical and Other Among Primitive Races in Antiquity, the Middle Ages and Modern Time, which would be, this is the uh, 1970 edition by Causeway books. I have an earlier university book, same uh, same edition. But, uh, yep, yeah, this is the book. This is the one that got all your uh, exorcism movies started. Uh, sadly, I think probably, post the exorcist movie, we get a lot of, a lot of copycat movies. Movies. We get a lot of possessions and that sort of thing. But I'm fairly certain the writers of those movies, third rate that they were, never so much as looked at this book, which is a pity. We could have had a whole lot better in horror films if they had read this book. But hey, who can bother? <laughs> Research. Bah. Did you see The Exorcism of Emily Rose? I may have or I may not have. I'm uh, seemingly unimpressed by uh, a lot of the later, after uh, the post-exorcist movies. Okay, well... I thought it was fantastic. We're going to have to watch it. Okay, we're on to book number nine, The Books of the Beast. Essays on Aleister Crowley, Montague Summers, Francis Barrett, and others. Timothy Darcy Smith in this Crucible Books. This is another trade paperback. And this book was first published in 1986. So, this is the first publication. It was 1987. So First edition. First edition. Nothing like a good first edition. Trade back. But this is, uh, these are essays on Aleister Crowley, Montague Summers, Francis Barrett. Francis Barrett, of course, was a uh, classic ritual magician who published uh, the Magus in the late 1800s. These are essays on all of these folks. Wow. I just opened this book and out fell a uh, old um, business card. Unfortunately, the book suffers from some yellowness, but uh, this is a good book. I remember reading it fairly thoroughly from uh, front to back. Got a lot of good stuff on notable magicians in here, of course. Uh, Alistair Crowley, Francis Barrett. Montague Summers was an interesting fellow. He was uh, supposed to be a Catholic priest. He dressed like one. And he uh, went about as a priest, but there's no there's no uh, direct connection, no historical connection between him and the Catholic Church. Interesting thing about Montague was uh, he wrote about witches and witchcraft and that sort of thing, and was under the distinct impression that witches got exactly what they deserved. Oh my goodness. W.B. Yeats, the great Irish poet, uh, called him out in uh, one of the uh, big big uh, newspapers back in the day. I remember this stuff was coming from the 1920s. And uh, W.B. was quite outraged to think that there was someone living who thought that witches deserved what they got. Yes. So uh, he took out a uh, full-page opinion about it and just cut Mr. Montague Summers. Well, let's say he had a, Mr. Summers had a uh, fairly, um, not a good reputation. He did not. Uh, had some problems. I don't want to get too specific about his problems because it's a discussion that I don't <laughs> care for. Yeah, a discussion for another time. A discussion for another time. And actually, we will get around to covering uh, a collection of Mighty Summer's uh, Dark Secrets, as it were. So stay tuned, folks. That's what you call foreshadowing. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, so we have our 10th book here. It's another trade paperback. It's another thick book. And it's called The Portable Atheist. Essential readings for the non-believer, selected and with introductions by Christopher Hitchens, author of the number one New York Times bestseller, God is Not Great. Woo. So this is put out by DeCapo Press, a member of the Perseus Book Group, copyright 2007. Right, this is a greatest hits collection of atheism. And as my good and dear friend Tanya noted, it is a very thick book. It's a trade paperback. And it's a good thing that it's a big, thick book because you might need to use it in your defense should you uh, bring up one of these discussions about atheism. <laughs> This, my uh, introduction to all this stuff was um, from a guy I met randomly. He was one of my clients. He was an atheist, and he noted that I was wearing a pentagram, and so he definitely wanted to discuss that with me. So this is a book that I, I picked up because I thought the discussion was interesting. I don't, however, feel that uh, this whole universe is a random roll of the dice. Now, this is a hard book to read. you got to be on your toes. you got to pay attention to what you're reading. I, being one of the more enlightened uh, intellectuals around, these days i uh, had difficulty <laughs> with the book i hung in there but it is a very good book it gives the basis of atheism and that sort of thing and by the way while we're on this subject uh, if you've never seen um, the atheist experience on youtube you should do that it's hilarious people call as it's, it's um hosted by two to three atheists 
one of um, the chief guy, I can't remember his name right off the bat, but he was studying for divinity school. So to that end, he read the Bible backwards and forwards several times and eventually came to the conclusion that it's all a lot of nonsense. <laughs> Yep. God is not great, a provocative and entertaining guided tour, atheist and agnostic thought through the ages, with never before published pieces by Salman Rushdie, Ian McEwen, and Aya Hersey Ali. So yeah, I remember this as being a very good book, a very, very good reference. Again, I I'm not convinced that all this is some kind of a cosmic accident. I uh, get where these folks are coming from, but uh, I've had a lot of spiritual experience that would so strongly suggest to me that there is a uh, sublime intelligence behind the veil between this world and the next. I've had many, many experiences that uh, confirm my feelings. It's not that I, I believe, I understand. Hmm. I understand. And note that uh, understanding is um, the Kabbalistic Sephira Bena, which is the Dark Mother. And uh, really good book. Uh, if you're interested in uh, atheism, I would strongly uh, suggest you pick it up. And again, if you get in that discussion and it's not going your way, you can use this book as a weapon. <laughs> oh, gosh. And on that note, thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. And stay tuned for the next 10 books. I love you all.